Century Month Wayne family and friends. My name is Crystal Taylor and I am a social studies teacher at Lyndhurst 7th and 8th grade center. I also serve as the social studies department chair. This is my third year with Wayne Township, but my teaching career started about 18 years ago. Um, after my eighth year of teaching, I took about a four to five year break to be a stay at home mom. And then I returned back to teaching. So I am in my 13th year of teaching secondary social studies. Over the course of my teaching career, I've taught both in the private and public school sectors. Um, the different grades that I taught uh, was seventh grade world history and geography, eighth grade US history, middle school civilizations, 10th grade world civilizations, 11th grade US history, AP European history, modern American history, 12th grade US government, 12th grade current events. And I've also have been a guest lecturer to the College of Education of Boyce College. My journey to education um, as far as career wise was started during my senior year of high school. Um, I knew I wanted to go into a career uh, where I could work with youth and also help people. So my parents encouraged me to go into uh, pursuing a degree in education. And so that's what I did. And the reason I decided to go into social studies education is because I enjoyed learning about individual people and their stories and how they use their own gifts and talents as leverage for positive change. I also love learning about my own culture and heritage, which is black history. And um, I also wanted the opportunity to teach history from multiple perspectives and for students to be empowered by what they learn. Um, as far as my own education, um, after high school, I attended Indiana State University and I graduated from there with a bachelor's degree in social studies education. And I also minored in African and African American studies. Um, I attended Olivet Nazarene University and received my master's in educational leadership. And currently I'm a part of IU's teacher leader pathway program. And I have the opportunity to take uh, classes online with a group of other educators from around the state. And we get to learn how to be better teacher leaders. I've been married to my college sweetheart TC for 18 years. And we have two children, Trinity and Timothy. My family keeps me busy and I cherish every season and stage of life that we get to share together. Um, for fun, I like to uh, go hiking, I enjoy reading and I enjoy traveling, especially visiting historical sites. All right, so I'm excited to tell you about the Black Arts Movement um, and just to, I want to break down this title for you. Um, with Black Arts Movement, the word Black is referring to Black people, Black culture, Black celebration, Black pride. Arts is referring to different types of artistic expression. So music, visual arts, poetry, dance, theater. And then movement is referring to a term that is described to uh, explain to us how a group of people work together to advance their shared political, social, or artistic ideas. So that is what the Black Arts Movement was about. It was a name given to a group of politically motivated Black poets, artists, dramatists, musicians, and writers who emerged alongside the 1960s Black Power Movement. The Black Arts Movement began in 1965 formally when poet Amiri Baraka, formerly known as Everett Leroy Jones, established the Black Arts Repertory Theater in Harlem, New York in 1965. Amiri Baraka is often referred to as the father of the Black Arts Movement. And the theater that he established was a place for artistic expression. The Black Arts Movement began um, after Malcolm X was assassinated. He was a key leader of the Black Power Movement. In February of 65, he died. And soon after that, we get the establishment of the Black Arts Movement. As far as the Black Power Movement, it had kind of two sectors. One side was the revolutionary nas nationalists. An example of that is the Black Panther Party. And then you had the cultural 
nationalists that came out of the Black Power movement. And those are the creators of the Black Arts Movement. This event is important to our history because it was a way for Black artists to create Black art for Black people as a means to awaken Black consciousness and achieve liberation. Um, the purpose of the amazing art and music and the writing, so the poetry and the novels uh, that were created, the purpose of it was to raise awareness of the struggles, the strengths, and the celebrations of African Americans. The Black Arts Movement left behind many classic spirited pieces of literature and poetry and theater. Some Black artists and writers receive cultural recognition and economic success with published works. Scholarly journals were written and also Black publishing companies emerged. Writers such as James Baldwin and my favorite author, Maya Angelou, along with Nikki Giovanni, Sonia Sanchez, they rose to fame during this movement. The Black Arts Movement spread from Northeast United States to other parts of the US and other Black aesthetic movements sparked in different parts of the nation. The Black Arts Movement came to an end in 1975 due to a shift in the leadership's political views. The Black Arts Movement is known to have laid the foundation for modern day hip hop and spoken word. And overall, the Black Arts Movement was a dynamic instrument of Black expression and Black pride that was used to combat the struggles with racial discrimination and also a way to celebrate Black culture. So I hope you learned something new today. Thank you for listening. Grace and peace.